the simple sense in which we can understand Nietzsche as a um, Platonist with the full uh, force of a sort of um, Socratic uh, pro hyresis or um, and Schlossenheit, a kind of locking in to the right direction to find the sage or to find the um, thinking, um, an overlap of uh, numerous regimes, numerous paradigms, numerous ideas. Um, if we begin with Leo Strauss's uh, formula that uh, there are n number of ways to seek the right way to live and that the good life is simply um, a name for the right way to live and that uh, Socrates or Plato in seeking the good life um, seek the one right way to live um, we can then say simply of Nietzsche, Nietzsche proposes the right way to live he simply says the right way to live is to recognize that um, one cannot attain to the position of truth or the perfect sage in the sense of um, the apology of Plato where Socrates basically presents himself as the phronimos, as um, the whole of Plato's output that we ha that has come down to us aside from the, the letters and the definitions which might not come from him um, are a continual um, perpetual presentation of the, the life uh, as it ought to be lived in other words in investigation in Socratic uh, questioning um, as is unparalleled in the entire um, uh, Western tradition nobody else has spent their entire uh, career uh, presenting the model or paradigm of how one should live, um, which basically uh, means the life of the university, um, if the university can still be compared to the um, garden, which is called the Garden of Academus, where the academicians um, had their origin and in some tiny way still have um, their continuing um, uh, springing up, like a um, spring coming out of the, the ground, um, except that, of course, the current university is geared towards uh, anti-philosophy in the simple sense that um, it's geared towards a profession, which means towards making money rather than towards um, seeking wisdom because one is inwardly has the um, propulsion towards it or because one has set one's uh, pro hiersis or um, and, and schlussenheit one's walking into the right direction in that direction so uh, Socrates has presented himself as this phronomos that at least he knows how to do that this is what the man of practice, at least he can tell you something, some practical steps, in other words, some tangible steps, which are assumed to be like the unapproachable light, as Paul puts it, like, like the good. So in other words, practical is always um, a radically confused term because it kind of means just tangible, and therefore it could mean something bad, but it's the sort of things that are tangible that we assume on certain uh, foundations to be good, one of which would be um, let's say if you want to, if, if you're a younger person and you're preparing for a profession, then this seems necessary and it seems practical and it seems like you want to prepare your life in that way. Um, but from the point of view of the whole image we have of a university, if it includes Plato's um, academy, you could say, well, it's actually come full circle and it's now they're producing deliberately people who want to be paid and become part of the professions, which were originally the antithesis, the um, sophist Gorgias, for example, who took money for his teaching versus Socrates, who did not take money for his teaching, um, and other um, uh, 
the whole texture of the object which is supposed to be viewed under the same paradigm could be questioned. But in any case, in that original setting, the phronomos or the one who could tell you something tangible that seemed to be at least plausibly good to do was set off against something higher, which would be the sage. So there's always this break between what seems to be the current best view about the tangible things that we could actually set ourselves as an agenda, as um, things to be done as um, a purpose for the human being, which is kind of like a religion in a certain way, set steer towards forces ahead of oneself, which nonetheless seem to have some practical steps which you could take to um, bring them about at the end. Maybe it's um, pointed at some uh, the most remote uh, place, like the film 2001 uh, from 1968, uh, about the spaceship that goes way out into um, the infinite uh, space, and then maybe it finally achieves the truth, or um, uh, Vasai's Dankin, or um, what is called thinking, or something like that. So there's a juxtaposition again from the ordinary to this. Um, from the front of most of the sage, something like that. Um, doesn't Nietzsche simply set us another one of these uh, presentations of the best way to live, which is these, especially laid out in this book on uh, the uses and abuses of history, for example, simply saying you must put the emphasis here rather than here, and um, the nihilism, as he's calling it, is only a intermediary stage, which will then be followed by the learning to grapple with the situation that has been disclosed um, since the end of the uh, 19th century, where it's clear that um, uh, something like the uh, sage cannot sage taken as the real model that people can actually uh, detect these tangible steps of how to run their life, how to build institutions and so on from, that can't be ever reached, but there's only a sort of um, setting off in different directions and a, um, a pathos towards different directions and realizing this as a limitation, then Nietzsche gives another platonic view of the best life. So um, again, another example in Plato would be uh, Plato and Aristotle thought that there would always be a kind of scarcity where you would need 70% uh, of the population or some large proportion of the population to be doing tasks that nobody really wanted to do. Um, farming was much harder in former times without machinery, very grueling uh, panos, as the um, ancients put it, um, drudgery, drudge work work that people really don't, didn't want to do, not um, um, service work, which isn't, doesn't count as labor by the ancient standard, or uh, working in a university which is called um, leisure by the ancient, ancient standard, or um, odium I think is the Latin word, um, so that there was always believed that there had to be, in Plato himself, there had to be a limit by reality to what the best possible case was. And in the same way, Nietzsche simply could be understood as presenting realities that weren't um, known before his time properly, but bringing them into focus and saying, okay, now since we know this is the reality, this we have to deal with it, and then um, what's the best way to deal with it? And then this is simply another Platonic view or Socratic view of uh, the best life.